Hi guys, Umbrella Corp Gamer here. How are you? And welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, this is the first channel that I've created, um, and I thought I would kick it off with my first video being of Gunsmith. Um, so, what is Gunsmith? Well, Gunsmith is a factory floor uh, manufacturing game, a bit like, like a bit like Factorio and Dyson Sphere program. You basically create assembly lines of equipment and clothing that you are going to export for money. Um, this game has been in development for quite some time. It is amazing. I seriously recommend going to get it. Um, big shout out to C Corp Technologies, Richard, Ed and the guys. Um, they've done an amazing job developing it so far and it is due for a 1.0 release in a few weeks. Um, Richard has just stated on the Discord, that, which I will link in the description below, that um, he just wants to add, he wants to basically give the game a full playthrough, he wants to highlight a few things and uh, add a few bits and pieces, take some things out that he thinks are necessary, um, freshen up, polish it off, and then it's going through for release. But even then, he has stated that even then, even it's only going to release because then it's a fully functioning game, not that it's complete, they're going to be providing full support and um, probably adding content thereafter. So we have a lot to look forward to. Um, so look, a big shout out to the guys. They've done amazing. And I'm seriously looking forward to see what they bring to the table. So <clears throat> here we have it. Um, so let's start a new game. And they've recently updated the UI a little bit, but I think it, it kind of needs a tweak or two because if you even remotely hover over something, it goes into the next menu and it's easy to make a mistake and move on. Um, maybe they could just have a look at them making these clickables instead of hovers, but look. It's fine, I mean, it works, it's great. So the scenario we're gonna do is Glovesmith. This is a basic scenario, um, easy enough to do to get you started, and it in no way restricts you to only making gloves either. You can actually research and move on to create other things. You just complete the scenario once you've fulfilled, fulfilled these goals, which is create $5 million worth of wealth and manufacture 1 million gloves. So we're gonna do that one. Character, I'm going to pick John Smith because for me and my style of play, he has the best uh, bonuses to start with. So, for example, he is um, a goods administrator, so 10% less staff salary, which is handy. That saves us money. Experienced businessman starts with $20,000 more. Always good to have more starting money. Uh, plus, there is a $75,000 cushion of debt that you're allowed to go into. So, anything on that or below is declares you bankrupt in the game and that's when you lose so you need to be careful so already that's like what, 95,000 that we can use um positive notoriety starts with one plus level of notoriety notoriety can either grant you bonuses if it's positive notoriety or it can grant you nerfs if you have negative notoriety this is a very good new tool in the game um, which we'll have a look at as we go so john smith uh Difficulty, normal, $125,000 starting normal, starting with normal budget, easy, gives us $200,000, I think this is a bit too easy, Like, but if you're starting off for the first time, more money, you know, kind of grants you less worry, so I, if you're brand new to the game, well, I mean, start off with easy and have a, have a little bit of explore with the game to get started off and, you know, give yourself a bit more enjoyment out of it, however, you want to start challenging yourself, start on normal, hard, and then gunsmith, so okay so normal and 125,000 plus the odd 90,000 we can start with kind of gives us around 200,000 as well so it's kind of balances out in the end starting country I'm going to pick we actually get a few a few different countries we can start off with which is like what the United States UK Germany uh, Russia China yeah, that's it for the moment. I think they're going to add more countries as they go. I'm from Ireland, so the closest I can pick is United Kingdom. For those of you who are in America who think we're, we're think we're English, we're not. I'm Irish, so I'm this right here, down here where you can pick. I'm Irish. I'm not English. I'm only picking this because it's close to me. That's it. Belts mode. Two systems of the game: snap belts and physics belts. These are pretty much what they say on the tin. Physics belts actually does use physical objects and physical gloves. You can create a pile of gloves on your factory floor if you're not careful. Um, I'm not used to this system, so I'm going to use snap belts, uh, which effectively uses sprites instead of physical objects. So you'll see what this is. For me, this is a more comfortable style of play, and I like I just like playing this way, so this is what I'm going to choose today. Finalization. So this is everything that we've picked. United Kingdom, 10% faster research. 
10% higher sale price for explosives. So if we decide to do explosives, then this will be good for us. John Smith, he's going to bring those bonuses that we mentioned earlier, and here's our goals. So let's get started. Good morning. It's me, Vienna. I know this has taken longer than expected, but I'm happy to tell you that we've started to conclude your father's estate. I've sent you the keys to a small factory that you've inherited. Use the front door with the padlock. Unfortunately, there's not a lot left, much of it was reclaimed by creditors after he passed away. Okay, so this is the main factory floor. You, we've, as you can see, we've been provided with a few bits of equipment that we can use. So we'll start placing these. There is also a, a brief introduction that new players can use. I've played through the game several times, so and I, again, I love it. So for me, replayability is not a problem at the moment. Um, I'm not going to do the introduction for the purposes of this, strictly because I've played the game too long. I will state to anybody, if you're new to the game, by all means, do this introduction, and it will get you orientated with uh, placing your machines, connecting them up, and I think it deals a bit with staff. I'm not sure, but definitely do this if you're new to the game. Okay, so... Right, first thing I'm going to do, pause the game. Um, this stops some things, but not others. There's uh, random events that take place, which will pop up on the screen shortly. Um, and I'll explain those. The reason I'm pausing the game is because as time runs in the factory, you get charged on maintenance costs of your equipment. I'm not sure if those maintenance costs uh, are included if and when the machines are off and not working, or whether only when they're working. However, for the purposes of safety, I'm going to stop the clock, pause the game, because I don't want to get charged on machines that I'm not using yet. Okay, so let's go up to, we have, as you can see, we have a, a few buttons here at the top. Um, I'm, I'll, exp I'll show you notoriety. Notoriety, as I said, grants you bonuses. As you can see, maintenance cost discount of 5%, or the value is increased by 10%, and these increase as you earn not notoriety points. I can't remember if these stack. I'll check this out and get back to you. Um, and also nerfs. As you can see, staff have daily 4% chance to quit due to risky reputation. Staff wages increase by 15% or values increase by 40% for the following clients. So you do get some bonuses, but you get nerfs as well with negative notoriety. With positive notoriety, you get not so good, but you still get good perks. So. I think this is something that they can definitely work on as well because it's very easy to get to here. I mean, like if you have like one one million in the bank, like literally you could just do a one-time payment of one hundred fifty thousand. Boom, you're there, done. <laughs> so you have that, and you have the max perks. So I think they, I think like they should probably implement maybe some kind of goal system that you should use to to earn notoriety points to get there. I think this would be more fair on the gameplay. But okay. So the globe. The globe shows us the countries in which we have factories right now. We have one factory in the UK where we chose. Chose here. New factory. We're going to rename this to Main Factory. Okay. Note to the devs as well. Uh, I think this was suggested, but damn, there really needs to be a kind of a folder system in here where you can like place factories in a folder, even folders within folders, because if you want to have like your intermediaries, uh, which I'll explain down the line, like, it'd be handy if we could just sort these factories a bit more rather than just, like, list a factory that you buy in just one big list because it's very easy to lose your way unless you have, like, an amazing naming convention that can fit inside this bar. So, anyway. Market, where we can order in our products, and we can also create automation rules when we get the staff to buy in if certain things happen or sell. Research. This has all the research that we are available that's available to us in the game, including uh, maintenance discounts, uh, including machinery, logistics, as you can see. Uh, these are our storage racks. We can research these to be able to stack them higher and higher. Also bigger storage racks. Uh, sorry, these are the big size ones, and then these are the uh, stacking levels that we can use. One research I highly recommend, belts, fast belts. You will want to get uh, mergers and splitters, and you finally want to get fast belts when you can. Do not start this unless you have the money, because believe it or not, Research is something that can break you immediately if you are not careful. So, um, and then utilities, so we can get better generators. I believe they're going. To, I believe the team is going to introduce better heaters and water pumps as time goes on. I, I think these are due to get released probably with the 1.0 release. We'll see, but they did say they're introducing more of these. So, staff, uh, staff cost discounts are in research capacities, which means we can or we can hire more researchers for the more levels that we have here, and we can. 
these are line control capacity. So in other words, your line control workers can operate more machines in one line. So this, I think the highest being 16, yeah, 16, and the lowest of the research being 12. Currently, staff can operate 10 machines. So that's handy. Clothing. So this is one category of the research we can do. So right now, as we are aware, we have gloves available to us. So we can create gloves straight off the bat. Then we can research camo trousers, camo backpacks, or combat backpacks, uh, camo combat boots, camo vests, Kevlar, and yeah. Then we can research bullets. Uh, we can either research them straight away or bulletproof, bullet production licenses in order to make it legal for us to make these. I recommend getting the license, but sure, look, I won't tell you what to do. You're all adults. You can make your own decisions. We can make explosives, we can make TNT, or we can make grenades. Again, we need a license, but, you know. Guns. Uh, yeah, so we can craft a hell of a lot of stuff here. As you can see, I will leave this to you to explore the tech tree, or we might move on to it in due course. And we can do vehicles, so we can do Humvees and tanks. I see no reason why the guys won't maybe introduce something like helicopters. I mean, I mean that's just land vehicles. I mean, they could, you know, introduce maybe submarines or, you know, planes. And I think on one of the, um, I think on one of the updates that Richard was giving. Um, he has like this warehouse that he stores all this, all the, all the objects that he's created. I saw drones and mines. Like I, I think he's bringing a hell of a lot of stuff to the table. So I'm really looking forward to see what happens with this release when it comes out. So <clears throat> that is the research queue. So we will come back to this. And orders. This is where we will take in orders for the products that we are creating, right? Um. So camo gloves is what we are able to make at the moment, and this is what people are ordering. But occasionally, even if you are not creating them, people will try to order things that you are not making. For example, people will be ordering backpacks when we're not even making them yet. So what can we do? First off, item list, camo glove. Oh, I see they got rid of it. Control which items are available to order by your clients. So yeah, once we have them, if, if, we, are, if we are creating backpacks and other things, we can turn them off because we don't want to sell them at that time. So if I, I can't turn that off. Ah, oh, okay, fair enough. Not sure if that's a bug. I, I know that we can. It's the only item that we're making. I'm not sure if that's by design, but... Anyway. So, just to get it started. Um, dog wants to... Uh, dog wants to order 260 camel gloves. He's willing to give us $1,876 for 260 camel gloves. Okay, I'll accept that order. You can accept all of these, but I'm only going to do one order at a time just to kind of get us started off. So that order is pending. Once we have 260 or more gloves in our stock, we will be able to fulfill that order and they will be removed from our stock and sold to Doc. And we will get the the order value for, for that. Okay. So moving on. Resources. This shows us what's currently in our factory inventory. We have 20 sheets and 20 plastic blocks, which we will turn into camo gloves in a few minutes. Um, uh, the other main we're going to look at at the moment is the cookbook. So when you when you research new items, you will use this to be able to find out what it is you need to create the production line. So what do we need? Well, we need a dispenser that's going to dispense plastic blocks. We need a dispenser that's going to fa dispense fabric sheets. Right now we only have one dispenser, so we'll need to buy another one in order to create the second product or the second intermediary or input, I should say. Uh, we have been provided the rest of the equipment to do all this. So how does this work? So two dispensers. One dispenser is going to lead to a heater, which will melt the plastic block into a plastic fitting, uh, uh, which will melt the plastic block. We have a uh, plastic former, which will form the plastic block into a plastic fitting. We have another dispenser, which will do fabric sheets, which will go into a cutter, which will cut them to fabric gloves. Then those, the plastic fitting and the fabric gloves will get merged into a camel glove, which will go to a sewing machine, which will go to the boxing machine, which will then go to the end of line. The end of line is a separate machine. Shouldn't it really be here? Nah, doesn't matter. Okay, so let's put that into action. We will start to make our first production one. Okay. By the way, so this is the main factory. Big hole in the wall. 
this is ba this is obviously just to teach you and get you started off you know they want people to really kind of explore a bit in the game there is some you can expand this factory quite a way as well um only thing for me is is that these trees clip through the wall if you build the wall too close um i think the guys are working on these trees and uh, objects will get destroyed if like you build near them i'm not sure but definitely something for them to look at not that i'm saying it's a bug i mean i, I know it's just you know not on the list of things to look at, at the moment but you know small things okay so we need uh one machine that we're not going to be using in this build or this line <clears throat> these, these lines is the water pump we don't need this okay so what does it do what can we do get rid of it and we just got 1200 for that machine which is good extra money okay that's our dispenser here first dispenser so we are going to place this uh, i'm gonna put it near the door i'm gonna put it there to get us off. Place it here. Okay. Now, outputs. We need to set our first output on it, which will be fabric sheets. Then we need to buy a another dispenser, which we'll place next to it. Output will be plastic blocks. So fabric sheets on the left, plastic blocks on the right. Fabric blocks are going to go into a heater. And they need the machines need to be at least one meter apart. And I'm saying, I, I got this from Ed as well, where one meter is basically one factory floor, floor tile square. So one meter is this one meter apart. And that means we can, which is the minimum required to hook up a belt from point A to point B. So um, this needs to go into a Butter. Double clicking actually just kind of like you click once shows you the information of the machine. I've got the current machines to be fabric gloves. Then double clicking lets you move it. It's a shame that this kind of clips are small, but because if it didn't, I'd be able to move this machine. I like things neat and I can't make this neat. So our heater. We'll go into the plastic former, which will output plastic fittings. And that needs to be one turn of square. Okay. And then we have our merger machine. Seeing as this is the one that's most used, I'm going to place it there just for neatness. Then from our merger, we'll go through a sewing machine. Hmm. Our sewing machine, we will essentially have a completed camo glove, which we will send off to a boxing machine. And then once 20 products go into the boxing machine, it will fulfill, uh, it will box them in batches of 20. So 20, 20 products are required for one box. So output from the merger machine will be camo gloves. So products, yeah, that's correct. And the end of line, which is what will send those boxes to our storage over here. You'll see these actually fill up with boxes when um, when when uh, when items get boxed up. Uh, I'm just going to stack these over here. I don't know why. I just have a habit of putting them over in this corner for this particular factory floor. Uh, as I said, as I've shown, in the research allows you to um, stack these higher and, and as well as that, or create bigger stack racks when, um, what's it called? Stack. Racks. <laughs> when you, you can actually unlock bigger racks as well. So I'm going to get by in a few more racks because we are going to need these. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 20, 40, 60, yeah, I'll just sell a couple. Here, 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 here. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. All right. And next, we need to link these machines up. So, belts. Now, there, here, here, here. Point to know, each section of belt you place has a maintenance cost. So this is a hundred dollars per section, right? And a lot of people like would say, why didn't I corner this? So I could have done this. Oh, oh no, I can't because it's still yeah. So if you want to do a turn like that, and then to keep it neat, it would actually cost you. $200, but just one straight run of belt. Get rid of this. So this is only going to cost me $100. Like, the length has not like nothing to do with it. The max length, you would still only pay $100 for that section, so. Now, we're only, what are we missing here? We are literally missing one more thing, and that is a uh, line controller. Okay. Which I will place there. Um, okay. Now, we need to hire him. So recruit and assign. So what's it? Jensen English. Station line group one. So now we have hired and automatically assigned a worker to this line. Now we need to link these machines up to this control desk. So add here, 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 four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's only nine machines. He still has one machine available to him that he can you that he can operate. Now, before we make these, let's make sure that our guy has somewhere to go to chill out. So we are going to staff room. Um, couch. Perhaps the gap here. Here. Plants, uh, which add bonuses to their rest as well. This coffee table. As you can see, the area effect hits two couches. I think you can just manage to hit three couches if you do this. Not sure, but we only need two for the moment. So, hmm? and a nice TV on the wall so that they can watch. Uh, so they can watch uh, aliens, which uh, I, I was um, I let me explain this. I was having a little bit of fun in the files of this game, and I clipped the movie Aliens, and I added it into the files. So now the TVs on the wall actually play the scene from Aliens where <laughs> the Marines are getting are getting swarmed by the aliens in the in the uh, in the in the place. <laughs> I love doing, and I just love doing this, having fun. So the guys can come in and watch aliens on their break. How about that? No copyright intended. <laughs> okay. So. Let's power these on. Okay, so they're on. Now, why is nothing happening? Well, because the game is paused. Although the bells may work, the game is still paused, so nothing's going to happen. We'll unpause this now in a second. What we need to keep track of is what these machines are costing us in terms of power and heating. Okay? One heating machine supplies 50 points of heat. We're only using five with our single heater here. The power requirements that this, this these machines are using is 184. We're operating currently operating 300. Okay? So each of these is supplying, I think, 100, is it? Yeah. And I'm just going to move these to create a little bit more space. As long as you have one side of a machine available, a mechanic can come to fix it as well. So, and let's get this going. Here we go. There's our sheets on one side, our blocks on the other. 
We are getting formed, and we are making glyphs. And when we get 20 glyphs in, the box will go through, and it gets stored. So we have 20 glyphs. Now, let's check and see our stock of it. So we have no fabric sheets available. So let's buy in. I'm going to order in 100 of them. Buy. Buy. Actually, I'll do 200. Like that. Now we have now we have a good bit of money here. Okay. So. Why don't we upscale a bit? Here, selection, blueprints. Let's create a blueprint, our basic blue, blue, blueprint. Boom. So, we're going to create a new folder here called Camo Gloves. Actually, let me put this in all caps Camo Gloves uh, times one, just to signify that it's a single line. No, actually, that's the folder name. And then we're going to add the blueprint. Camo gloves times one to signify it's a single line. And it keeps track of the cost to build this. So this, this build will cost eleven thousand five hundred and fifty dollars, right? Now remember, this is something you need to be careful of. It shows you the requirement to run it as well. It doesn't include the desk though, because these also require power okay let's go back into our blueprints place the blueprint now how are we going to place this well we need to be careful because we need to make sure that our mechanic can reach all the sides of the machines right so for me a good placement is at least and he needs at least one meter as in one tile space to go walk through so for me i like to make sure all these are placed like that, right? Simple, one tile space, okay? So my, our mechanic can reach all of these machines. And we're gonna hire a mechanic now in two minutes as well. Like this, and we'll just do that, create. Right, let's pause for a second. Just make sure the clock isn't running on us. So what else do we need to do? Well, we need our line workers, okay? Yeah. I'll set these up. Now, you saw me add all these machines individually to the line desk, okay? This is a faster way to do this. First, recruit and assign. We're going to add. And then if we highlight and hold down shift, it will highlight all of the machines that are connected to each other to it in a line via a belt, okay? So, hold shift, click, the same. Now, we've just added all those machines that quick but look we have a power requirement so we need more power we'll sort this out in two minutes because we want to finish these first so that we know how much power we exactly we need again recruit and assign see assigns yep and now we want to assign machines hold shift done next recruit so done so all the machines are done right So, we need more generators. Nope, that was the wrong one. Get rid of you. Generator. Yeah. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Three more. Okay, so 600. I believe this will cover us. So, let's power off. And we can use the, we can use the main here at the bottom to power everything on and, or everything off which is very, very handy when you're trying to troubleshoot. Now, we're not getting any greys. And looks like we still don't have enough power for everything. 140, yeah, we, so I think we need one more. Maybe a bit more? Okay, I think we need... 140. I think we need one more. 
There. Yep, that's sorted. See? Okay, became available to pair everything on. Okay. So power off. Power on. And the machines actually do have an have a uh, an alert light as well. See? Everything is in the green. If these don't work or if they're off, these will be red. Okay? So everything is green and everything is working. Okay? So let's unpause. And actually, let's just check the stock. We have 90, so let's just order in. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get us up to 500 each. Why not? 500 each. Okay. Now, see how quick our money went down? We were doing very well. Now we're going to be panic a bit to get our orders in. Okay. So let's unpause. And now we are making 1, 2, 3, 4. Four lines of gloves. So it's 20, 40, 60, 80 gloves per per unit that's made. Per box unit that's made. 20, 40, 60, 80. See how quick that was? So that's, uh, what is that? 20 by 3, 60, 1,200, yeah. Brooks are sighting, yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. By the looks of things, this will be able to fill, fill an order, okay? And we have, look, we have more than enough. So we can fulfill that. Done. And we got paid. So what other orders are available to us? Well, look. Mitchie. She wants 300. Uh, can we wait till the next unit? I think so. Do we have enough time? Do we have enough money? 80. 40. Done. So. So that's the, that's the main start. And yeah, so this is a very simple glove setup. This is the main start that you can have for this scenario. And I think in our next video, we may expand this a bit or expand our factory. Maybe we'll expand the lines a bit and get our money really going before we start getting adventurous and expanding factories. So hopefully you will join me then. Until then, I'm going to stop the video here. And I hope you've enjoyed viewing and I hope you will come back. So thanks very much, guys. And talk to you soon. Bye-bye.